Once you were a carbon atom, then you lived in a molecule of DNA, then the DNA lived in a single cell, then the cell lived in an animal, then the animal lived in a family, now the family lives in a tribe. You are human, your tribe is superhuman. 100,000 years ago, you could run and dance, sing, laugh, love life, be happy, be sad, make tools and weapons, work and play together with your family and tribe. You were eager to have adventures. Your tribe was growing. Africa was getting crowded. So some of you left and went walkabout around the world. The world is big, very big. It's hot round the middle and cold at the top and bottom, with much of it either too wet, too dry, too hard or too steep. Yet your family romped all over it, every nook and cranny in just a hundred thousand years, walking and running, galumphing and yomping all the way. How did you do that? A bit of evolution and a lot of invention, that's what did it. Evolution tweaked everybody to fit wherever they went. Those travelling up the planet found that there was less sunshine to the north. Sunlight is needed to make vitamin D, which is used by the body to make bones. So they evolved a paler skin which absorbs sunlight more easily. Those who remained in Africa stayed sensibly black because too much sunshine on a pale skin burns you. Less sunshine also means less warmth. To cope with the colder climate, those heading north invented clothes and needles and threads, of course. They also evolved a rounder, plumper body with a layer of fat under the skin to keep the warmth in. Further into the north and deeper into the cold, at the top of the planet, they invented the igloo to shelter from the worst weather. And they evolved around their eyes a skin shield to protect them from the cold winds called the epicanthal fold. This created Asian eyes, which can be seen nowadays all the way from Baffin Bay to Beijing. Where there was less food, they evolved to be shorter. Where there was more food, they evolved to be taller. They invented cooking to make the most of all the food they found. They invented language to share more complicated ideas with their growing tribes. They also evolved a lower larynx and more muscular tongue to make the language more colourful. What happened to the Africans who stayed in Africa? They evolved too. Africa is also big, it's hot nearly everywhere, and large parts are dry. Wherever they went, humans found difficulties which they evolved and invented their way out of. 12,000 years ago, there was another explosion. This time it was your own special homemade explosion. A food-filled, energy-packed, flavoursome explosion. Farming. All over the planet, everyone invented farming. It started at the same time in completely different places. Africa, Asia, China, Indonesia, America, India, and the ideas and inventions spread outwards to cover the globe. Now you started to get a grip on nature. You put evolution in the back seat while you took control with your own homemade evolution. The apple, which had once been a hard, bitter berry in Kazakhstan, was gently led across the plains of Asia and selectively bred as it went, growing larger each year until it became the ball of crisp juice we know today, exactly hand-sized. You created that apple. It's the same story for all the fruit and vegetables we eat today. They started small and hard and bitter. You made them big and soft and sweet. You did the same with animals, capturing the small dangerous buffaloes and turned them into placid cows with huge milk-filled udders and making sheep almost too woolly to stand up. Because you didn't have to move around the forests following the food, you could build solid houses. Plant your food in your garden and graze your swollen, sleepy animals in the field. Because this gave you a lot of spare time, you could make more children and keep them healthy, feed them better and make a safer world for them. And because your new children asked you for games and clothes and knickknacks, you used your spare time to invent things. Creating what? Creating what you would call society. Hi, society. Are you nearly here yet? You are now homo sapiens, a clever human. You have the clever brain and fingers you need to make a success of wherever you're living, on a mountain, desert, city, jungle, or by the sea, or in the hot, or in the cold.